Were you a fan of uh, MF Doom? I was. Yeah, that was that was that was a bummer, man. Like really going back and listening to his catalog, it is fucking crazy just how how inventive he was. Like even in the early two thousands, you know, he he really had such like a different outlook on like what was worth rapping about and just that that sort of like fun element of of rapping of just finding crazy shit that rhymed together or, or hilarious ideas you know it's just like I, I got into him from some like bmx videos back in the day and uh just really i don't know i, I never seen anybody who's been able to maintain a persona like that in hip-hop like to such an extent yeah i mean after he died see i was never into mf2 i'll be honest but I was into KMD. Mm. I had realized that I used to own that first KMD album, you okay. know, and he he used to be known as Zev Love X, right? And you know, it's probably a little before your time, but no. But I seen the video of him performing with them on some show way back in the day. Mm -hmm. that, that was crazy to just be like, damn, like I never even knew that he ever performed without the mask. Yeah, no, I mean, he he got brought out by Third Base. Right. In fact, he was on the song "The Gas Face," which was one of their their biggest songs, and. Uh, and I've interviewed Search and, and me and Pete Nice actually uh Search talked. just hit me up actually, which was crazy. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh yes, Search is dope. Um, but they, they brought him out. And um th there's a very interesting story around it. Did you know the whole story of KMD and, and why he be kind of became MF Doom and everything? No. So so KMD came out as a group. They had they had a, this first album, I think it was called Mr. Hood. It was a cool album, not nothing huge. There was a single called Peach Fuzz, which got a little bit of play, but not nothing really huge. And then it was time for them to come out with their second album. And I believe it was called Black Bastards. And they were on a major label at the time. And it was, the artwork was a drawing of a Sambo character being hung by a noose. Mm. Right? And the label was just like, nah, we're not touching this. And I guess they even offered to change the cover and then the label's like, no, we're not touching this. You guys are getting dropped. Mm. And then right around that time, one of the other guys in the group ends up getting killed playing bullfighter in the street with cars. Something really like just crazy, like playing Toro, like, you know, See, with that's why cars. we need the internet. People aren't doing shit like that now, you know? Like, yeah. you could just sit on TikTok and you won't feel the need to be, you know, playing stickball in the street, which inevitably leads to you <laughs> playing bullfighter with cars. Yeah, he got hit by a car and died. Wow. And then, you know, Zev, Zev Love X, you know, who later became MF Doom, um, he was, like, homeless. Heard he had really bad alcohol problems and, and, and stuff like that. And right. um, he kind of came back and reinvented himself as MF Doom, kind of, basing himself on dr doom you know he kind of felt like the, the industry abandoned him and left him to die and he's going to come back to get revenge like dr mm. doom and and that's when he developed that whole thing with the mask and, and everything else like that and just a very enigmatic figure that i don't even think he was photographed without the mask no after that ever i read uh, stories from people talking about being around him without the mask but publicly you always would have it yeah. on him. And I, I was reading, uh, oh, because because he has a two-hour interview, like a Red Bull interview. Yeah, like, I saw that. I saw parts of that. Yeah. I didn't watch it. Yet. I was about to watch it the other day because I never seen an interview with him all these years, which is pretty rare. Like to have a rapper you listen to that much that you never heard them speak or whatever. Like for for me on a personal level, but um, yeah, that's yeah. yeah I mean, from what I understand, because I think there were some some rumors about him uh, committing suicide. Uh, I heard that's actually false. Oh, okay. Because he was only like 59 years old or, or Damn, he was something like that. Let me let me double check. Damn, you could stay young forever when you got a mask. I know, right? The irony 40, is 40. No, my bad. He was 49 years old. Okay. Even worse. That's what I thought. He, even younger. Like uh, he was only 49 years old. Uh, from what I understand, he had serious, serious drinking problems. Well, he uh, talked about beer a lot on all his shit. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I think he may have actually had kidney failure and, and dialysis and stuff like that, and he wasn't really taking care of himself and, and so forth. And I think that ultimately his poor health just just caught up with him. What a shame! That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, underground legend MF Doom, uh, rest in peace. Uh, like I said, I, I went back and listened to some of his catalog. Not not really my thing. Mm. Um, but you know, listen, he he made his mark.
for me, MF Doom is a weird one because it's it's great background type music to just be listening to. But when I actually listen to it and actually pay attention to his bars and actually think about every bar, it's just like that just reminds me of why I, I have had a soft spot for him always because he's just like I, I like people who put words together in bizarre combinations and just find ways to like you know say something funny off the wall that just doesn't really uh they rhyme some shit together you would never think would be rhymed and that's always like he was just the king of that to me